everyone and welcome to Worship Together. Thank you for joining us as we explore more of God's big story. So let's begin our worship today with a big shout out of praise. Now remember, it's me, then you, then me, then you. And the words come up on the screen. Are you ready? God is our friend. All the time. Amen. Now, today's story is a miracle story. But let's find out where on the timeline that story comes in God's big story. Oh, look, it's in the Old Testament. So it reminds us that some of the stories of miracles can be found in the Old Testament a long time before Jesus. A story about the people of God. Dave is our storyteller today. Thanks, Lisa. Hi, I'm Dave, and I've been dragged out from behind the camera again to read to you the story of the helpful servant. Naaman was a soldier. Not just any soldier, but the commander of the whole Syrian army. He was a very powerful man, but he was afraid. Naaman, you see, was ill and no one knew how to make him well. His skin was covered with sores and he couldn't feel his fingers or his toes. Everyone felt sorry for him and God felt sorry too. So God whispered to a little girl who had been captured by Naaman's army and carried away from God's promised land. She worked for Naaman's wife, and one day she said to her mistress, Back in Israel, where I come from, there lives a man called Elisha. God uses him to make sick people well. If only Naaman would go and see him. And before long, the great soldier who had fought against God's people was off to seek help from God's prophet. Naaman didn't go alone. He took his servants and his horses and a chariot full of treasure to reward Elisha in case his cure would work. It was a grand parade and Naaman expected a grand greeting in return. But when he sent one of his men to knock on Elisha's front door, the prophet did not even answer. Instead, he told his servant Gehazi to say, if you want to be well, go and dip yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Now, it may be that Naaman was tired or frustrated or it may be simply that he was proud. Whatever the reason, the prophet's message made him angry. The Jordan River, he shouted, it's filthy. I'll throw myself into any river back in Syria, but I will not even stick one toe in the Jordan or take the advice of a man who cannot even be bothered to meet me. Begging your pardon, sir, mumbled one of Naaman's servants. But if the prophet had sent you off to do something hard, you would have gone straight away, wouldn't you? Of course, grunted Naaman, any soldier would. Well then, why can't you go 
and do something easy. Like washing in the river. It can't hurt. And it just might work. Naaman sighed. Oh, all right. And he led his men to the river. He dipped himself twice. Nothing. He dunked himself twice more. His skin was as ugly as ever. Twice more and still no cure. Naaman was getting angry again. But when he came up for a seventh time, spluttering and shaking the water from his face, Naaman's men let out a cheer. Naaman opened his eyes and looked at his hands. The sores were gone. Gone from all over his body. Naaman dressed and hurried back to Elisha's house. The prophet himself answered the door this time. And Naaman could not contain his joy. Take this treasure, take it all, Naaman begged, for you have saved my life. But Elisha said, no, for it was God, after all, who had healed Naaman. All right then, said Naaman, scooping up a pile of the earth. Let me take this with me, so that I can stand on a piece of your land and worship your God too. Elisha nodded and smiled. And God smiled too. For with a little girl and a muddy river, he had turned an enemy into a friend. Thanks, Dave. I love this story. The little girl is the hero. You don't have to be a grown-up, you know, to be a hero. Today we're going to ask Bishop Joe to explain more about the story and what we can learn from it about God. Now Bishop Joe is our new Bishop of Burnley, so it's brilliant that he's joined us on Worship Together. Let's see what he's got to say. Thanks Lisa. Hi, I'm Bishop Joe. It's great to be with you. When we think about miracles, we probably think mostly about the New Testament. Jesus spent three years going around healing people, performing miracles and teaching them about God. But of course, there are lots of miracles in the Old Testament too. And today's story is one of these. Our story takes place in Aram, which is just northeast of Israel, where modern day Syria is today. And the thing is that Aram and Israel didn't get on. They used to fight a lot. And Naaman, the hero of our story, the main character really, he's one of the top soldiers in Aram. He's rich and successful. He's even friends with his country's king. So he has lots of reasons to be happy about life, lots of things going for him. But he had a dreadful disease and the doctors couldn't cure it. So our story at the beginning is a sad story, except for one person in the story. There's a little girl who works in Aram's house. And although Naaman is the main character, she's the real hero. She worked in his house and she was just really young. And back then, in her day, Servants and young people were expected to keep quiet and not really say anything. They, were, they should be, they were told, seen but not heard. That doesn't sound like much fun, does it? But that's how life was for them. Well, this little girl took a risk. She believed with all her heart that if only Naaman would ask the God of Israel God of the Bible to help him, then God would heal Naaman. And so she took a risk. She so much wanted Naaman to ask God to help him, so much wanted Naaman to get better, that she took a big risk and she spoke up. And you know what? The most amazing thing happened. Naaman went 
and asked the God of the Bible to help him and God healed him. So our story at the end is a really happy story. Naaman gets healed and even more than that, Naaman learns to trust God, which is an even bigger blessing in our lives than health when we learn to have faith in God. So our story, what does it teach us? Well, it teaches me, first of all, the importance of putting my faith in God, even in hard times. And secondly, it teaches me the importance of telling other people how much God loves them. That's what it teaches me. But I wonder, what does it say to you? What do you think? Thanks, Bishop Joe. We look forward to seeing you on other episodes. Now it's time to pray together. And we're going to use some actions when we pray together today. So the first one is about being very small. The next one is stand up tall. And then the next one is speak out for others. Are you ready for that? Remember, we're going to do small, we're going to do tall and speak out for others. So let's pray. So Father God, even when we feel that we are very small, help us to stand up really tall and speak out for others. Amen. Did you get that right? I think we should do that again, even louder, thinking about the little girl in the story who did just that. So, are we ready? Even when we feel really small, Father God, help us to stand up tall and speak out for others. Amen. Have a great day, everybody, and see you next time. Bye.